You know, for the last 75 years, this hair has been in comedy rooms, comedy events, festivals, and everybody always says the same thing. Who the fuck is that guy? Well, why don't I move over here? When you shoot me out the window, my hair disappears anyway, doesn't it? That's probably better. Does it look, when you look through, do you see my hair? Arnold Schwarzenegger from 1978. These were jokes, I guess, that I wrote for Arnold Schwarzenegger. A memo from Jerry Lewis. Jeff, good talking with you. Now make funny shit happen. This was an article about me and Rodney Dangerfield, a CD that was coming out, I guess. This was when I had my heart attack. They did a story. A note from George Shapiro. Since we have similar projects to First Impressions, it's best we don't get involved. A contact list from 1990. All the people that were on Saturday Night Live, Robert Smigel, Chris Farley, they thought I should be doing films for the show. And then one of the big stars, who I will not mention, stood in my way. Jeff Gurian, a prominent Westchester dentist who's also a successful comedy writer, will be the subject of a TV pilot. Writing this script was easy, he says. It was like pulling teeth. I thought it was going to happen as far back as 1984. How many years is that? 94, 2004, 2014, 35 years ago. Someone once told a great joke. Someone broke into the William Morris office over the weekend and stole a million promises. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I'm Jeffrey Gurian, and this is the news. Sometimes I feel like I'm an observer watching my own life. You need a dentist who turns nervous patients' fears into laughter. And how can you know all these people and be involved in so many different things over decades? First time I've ever seen you without a beautiful woman. <laughs> and still not be a household name. Dr. Jeff Gurian. How are you, Jeff? Come on, have a seat, if you will. I remember being 12 years old and deciding what I wanted to do in my life. I knew I wanted to be a doctor, but I was a very sensitive kid, so I decided that I wanted to be a dentist. You don't have to worry about your patients dying. I was already writing comedy. I loved words and playing with words. I would spell clock, C-L-O-C-H, and say clock. It was around that time that I started stuttering. They sent me to speech therapy in my elementary school. It made me feel like there was something wrong with me. I started well into my 20s and beyond that. I didn't feel like I would ever accomplish anything. I didn't feel like I would ever be married, that I would ever have children, that I would ever have a career. But I had no confidence. I'm arguing with my own mind all the time. It wants me to just stay home and pull the covers up, but I fight it. How cool is this, right? It was on a string. They didn't even have lanyards in those days. August 9th, 1992. It's my VIP pass from the Just for Laughs Festival. I might bring this with me, too, just in case I need it. Because you never know. Vote for Harold and Kumar, 2008. So it's been in my bathtub for 11 years. <laughs> Why do you put it in the tub? Well, because it's an easy place to hold things. Then I have a bag for all my hair products. Style was always very important to me. You never know who's going to ring your bell. You have to be camera ready at all times. When you are a little bit different than other people, they tend to remember you. Testing, one, two, three, testing. Do you hear it? Testing, one, two, three, testing. Yep. It's good? Yep. I started Comedy Matters as a zine in 1999. I started getting asked to film these interviews, and that's when we went from Comedy Matters to Comedy Matters TV. You have a minute to shoot a little thing? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to help her out with some battle jokes. But where are we going to be after? Uh, I'm going to be hanging out. I'm going to be hanging out. I can find you. Nobody. Would you just do a drop say, hey, it's Sam J, and you're watching Comedy Matters TV? Sure. Uh, it's Sam J, and you're watching Comedy Matters TV. Boom. Thank you, Sam. I finally did some research into you. I've always known who you are, but never really but known it... what, like, other, your whole story. I didn't know the whole dentist thing. <laughs> I didn't know, like, I did some research in you. I'm like, this guy's lived a life. You're like the most interesting man in the world. 
It used to bother me. I, was, I remember laying in bed as a kid thinking, well, I want to be a dentist and I like show business, but you can't combine them. I was in dental school. I was only focused on that and on meeting Woody Allen. That was my dream. He was in a show called Play It Against Sam at the time. The night of the show, I left a note on the back of my dental school card, Woody, I'm here and I'll be coming backstage during intermission. So intermission came, and the stage manager was there, and I said, yeah, Woody's expecting me. He's in Tony Roberts' dressing room with the entire cast. Woody's sitting on a couch, and I look in, and I go like this to him. And he goes, and I'm like, yes, you. And he's actually holding my card, and he says to me, you must be Jeff. I lose it. I started saying ridiculous things like, let's open up a day camp and throw winter clothes at people. He goes, this guy's an effing nut. He goes, I said to him, I write comedy. I was hoping that you would look at it. He looked at all of my ideas. He didn't wind up saying, hey, Jeffrey, let's make movies together, as I had dreamed. But he said to me, hey, your stuff is very visual, and you should really think of making a film out of it. Jeffrey Gurian presents the Men Who series. Men who dance where they're not supposed to. Unauthorized dancing. What's this? Alternate side dancing? Who can read these signs? 1976, when I did a film about men who walk low for a living and enjoy it, way before Monty Python did the Ministry of Silly Walk. Hi, Mr. Peepless. Hello, Mr. Peepless. I think my grandmother is in this one with the cream cheese on her ankles. Am I kidding you? No, this is the first one here yet. Come right in. Right. What do you do for a living? I'm a guy on a hat. Those were some of the films I brought up to Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Yeah, this patience is going sour. Open. I bought a car that was made for one of the Isley brothers. I could only describe it as a pimp mobile. So I drove up to 30 Rock and I threw the doorman a couple of bucks and I said, watch my car, Lorne Michaels is expecting me. <laughs> Lorne Michaels had never heard of me. I snuck past security. Alan's Y. Bell was playing handball on the wall. I got him to watch my tape. He was like, wow, that's amazing. He sent me to his manager. The man's name was David Jonas. He called him on my behalf and that's how I got started writing for comedians. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Gurian, the uh, comedian, dentist, slash writer, driller. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> After seeing that buffalo barbecue, you might be asking yourself, what's a buffalo burger taste like? We interrupt this program to throw an incredible curve in your plans. And then one of the big stars, who I will not mention, stood in my way. Would you mind saying who that was? Yeah, I don't want to say, but what I'll say, what I'll say, I don't even want to give him the press. I discussed it with Mark Marin, and it's on my channel. And if you go to my Comedy Matters TV channel. This is TV. Please subscribe for him, for Jeffrey. Is he still in the frame? So this is my wild days. I meet this crazy chick, this model, and I yeah. said, oh, you want to come to SNL with me? Yeah, you and thought, like, I'll make an impression. I take her to the meeting, and who's there? Dennis Miller is there. Yeah. He couldn't have given a shit about my films. He wanted to meet the girl, right? Yeah. And she goes out with him that weekend, and they're partying with Robin Williams and Billy Crystal and whoever was in town. Head is. I, not me. Yeah. I call the next week for my appointment with Lauren Michaels. John Head says to me, listen, Jeffrey, I'm sorry. You have to call Dennis Miller because he liked your stuff so much, he wants to handle it. And he just wanted the chick. And he just wanted the chick, and he never took my call. My whole life has been about that, trying to forget well, that yeah, incident. Well, let's, well, Jeffrey, what's your part in it? Oh, I have a very big part in it. Maybe he'll see this. Yeah, I think that, that, that yeah, I think you owe uh, Jeffrey an apology. And if you can, Dennis, and I don't know you, I've never met you, and you know, I don't know how we would get along. I'm, I, I assume it would be difficult. Welcome back writing for comedians, writing jokes for them. Dentistry is his day job, but at night he's a comedy writer for some of the biggest comedians in show business. My nurse had strict instructions, never interrupt me while I'm working unless it's for show business. Dr. Lewis is calling, Dr. Rivers is on the phone, Dr. Burrell is on the phone. The only one nobody believed was Dr. Dangerfield. He's known for paying $50 a joke. Jeff Gurian is a modern day renaissance man, an artist in two fields. To me, it felt like I would be like a plate spinner on the Ed Sullivan Show. Well, I'm working on my knife throwing act in case the, the Ed Sullivan <laughs> Show ever comes back. I didn't want to be a novelty. Oh, hello. Even when I did Too Much Tuna, they introduced me as Dr. Jeff Gurian, DDS, and I said, could you please not do that? You ticked off? 
No, not at all. Are it's, you just heated at us like for giving like you this much of, tuna? The tuna's perfect. You're on a prank show called Too Much Tuna, Jeff. What do you like it no, or not? No, I'm not. Yeah, I think Jay Leno once said, the worst thing in comedy is to make 20,000 a year doing something else. I loved being a dentist so much, and I loved comedy. I could never just stop one to do the other. By the time I wanted to start performing, I had written for a lot of famous people, and I felt that there was a lot of pressure on me to be funny right away. And it kept me off the stage for a really long time. Like so many things in show business, most things don't tend to work out. People Magazine contacted me, and they sent Harry Benson, the world-famous photographer. They called me on a Friday night at 11 o'clock at night, and they said, your story will be on the newsstands on Monday morning. So I told everybody in the world, and the article didn't come out. It got bumped, it got bumped again, and then it never came out. And it was a huge disappointment. It really sent me into a tailspin for a while. I look at it with a grain of cyanide these days. <laughs> Not a grain of salt, but a grain of cyanide. Hey, it's Jeffrey Gurian here on the red carpet of the Just for Laughs Awards. It's like an addiction. I'm addicted to the excitement of it and to comedy in general. It's so good to see you, man. See this you, is man. so awesome. Come step in here. Uh, congratulations. My favorite guy in show business, baby. That is so nice. It's right here. That is so comedy nice. Matters TV, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm on the red carpet, but I'm on the other side of the camera. Pleasure seeing you on yeah, these red carpets. You're the best. We love seeing you every uh, time. Thank you. Nick, you're one of the kindest people that I've ever met in show business. It's you really are. Facade, you have Jeff a big man. heart. It's you know? all no, And maybe that's a niche for me. Jeffrey? Hi, how are you? Hello. How are you? heard yourself? I can't see you again. You can't see me. Okay, hold on. Let me... Usual problems we have. I can Every... see you now. You can see me now. Good. And I see you perfectly. Feel the ease that it comes with. That you can say yeah. the word easily. That there's no tension in your face. That there's no tension in your lips or your throat. That it just flows. Read. Read. It's, it's e we read. Had to read. We had to, we had to read mm -hmm. out, out loud a, a metaphorical metaphorical story that we had <laughs> there's the word again <laughs> written 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 yes written. yell it out man just right. get angry at it right right right, right. that's it right. yeah right 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 let's review this why is it yeah. okay when you're yelling i'm angry and i'm not not holding back as much it's on my mind all the time. Not a day goes by when I don't think about it. It was so much a part of my identity that I thought, who would I be if I don't stutter anymore? There's a part of your subconscious mind that sabotages you, gives you a disability, that tells you that you can't accomplish things. It creates fear. You're fighting against that part of your own mind. I have no idea what we look like. Absolutely not a clue. And I'm as guilty as anyone else. I went into a store recently. I bought something with my credit card. I give the woman my credit card. She looks right at me, right in my face. And she says to me, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> now, truth be told, this has happened to me before, but only from the back. Because from the back, I'm pretty sure I look like a lesbian. You have to be very careful what you fear in life because you tend to manifest your worst fears. You guys are amazing. I'm Jeffrey Gurian. Thank you so much. I'm not at a level where I'd like to be, but I don't know who is. But there are people who are successful who have a smaller lives, too. Always kick a balloon for good luck. Would you care for some balloon soup? Or paper pasta? I know you might be watching your weight. Eggs with legs. You know how hard it is to grow spoons? Every once in a while, a fork grows. I think it's kind of like a weed. I have a collection of eggs. One went back to 1988. This one says, hello, Jeffrey. I'm Mick Jagger's sister. My whole goal was always to say and do things that no one else has ever said and done before. And so I used to have people sign an egg for me when they came to my house. To me, 
that's the most beautiful song that was ever written. It's called Nocturne by Chopin. And I used to be able to play the whole thing. No one has a choice about being in show business. It's part of you, you love it. You do it no matter what. My own success, I started very late performing. I really wish that I had gone on stage much earlier in my life. But it feels good that I get to do what I love. Fame is a heavy drug. Maybe I've been saved from that. <laughs> a lot of people have never seen me perform. I don't know how they know me. The fact that they know me is enough. There's a great saying, the higher up the mountain you go, the lonelier it gets, but the view is magnificent. Oh, that's amazing. I never heard that. Everyone always told me I was ahead of my time. It's never too late for somebody to pick up on what you've done. When I started, I didn't know one person, not one. Never thought I'd have that. And it's funny, sometimes I don't remember what I did yesterday, but I can remember these stories that happened so many years ago because they're indelibly etched in my mind. That's how exciting it always was for me. And uh, I guess that explains it. <laughs>